What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing another scheduled preview and record prediction video, and this time we're going to be doing it for the 2020 Oregon Ducks. Oregon has been a team that's been in the playoff mix for so many years in a row, but maybe they just trip up on a game, and I think this year, Oregon has a potential to get back to the college football playoff. Their schedule is a little bit difficult. Uh, of course, they have a big non-conference game, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the 2020 Oregon Ducks schedule. All right, so here it is. Here is the Oregon Ducks schedule for 2020. And before we dive into that, you'll see there their record down at the bottom uh, for 2019 was 12 and 2. Of course, they won the Pac-12. Uh, they easily beat Utah. Uh, and then they beat Wisconsin in what was a very, very good Rose Bowl. I watched that entire game. What a game that was. Uh, that was a terrific game to watch. Um, and also before we dive into the schedule, we'll see up there, their home games are going to be in green. And then their away games are going to be in yellow with a green background. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Oregon's schedule. In their first game of the season, uh, this is a game that a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people are talking about the next game even more, but this game, uh, I think is catching a lot of people's eye. Uh, they have to play North Dakota State, of course, North Dakota State, the top FCS team they have been for almost a decade. North Dakota State has been the Alabama of FCS, um, and they've surprised a lot of teams. Uh, I believe it was 2016 and what at the time was a top 15 Iowa. I don't think that team ended up finishing ranked, but at the time was like a top 15 Iowa team. North Dakota State has pulled off so many upsets in the past couple of years, beating some big name programs, making a big name for themselves. Um, and I think this game could be interesting. Uh, I think this game, I think North Dakota State could give Oregon a game for maybe a quarter or two. Uh, but then Oregon is obviously one, a top 10 team in the FBS, which is a level above the FCS. So um, I think Oregon can win this game. Um, I would not be surprised if North Dakota State made it close, but I would be surprised if North Dakota State were to win this game. I'm giving this game to Oregon. I think it'll be interesting for maybe a quarter or two, and then in the second half, Oregon will be able to pull away. Now, this is the game that everyone is talking about. It's Oregon and Ohio State. Oh, boy, this, this game, what a game this is going to be to watch. And as an Ohio State fan, I am really, really, really excited for this game. I cannot wait to watch this game. It's already in week two. It's probably going to be the best non-conference game of the entire year. Um, the thing that separates Oregon from Ohio State is a quarterback. Uh, I know I said this in my Ohio State schedule preview video, but Ohio State is a quarterback better than Oregon is. They just have a far better quarterback uh, than Oregon does. And again, if Tyler Show um, can become what Justin Herbert was, maybe they have a shot. Um, but again, right now, I think there's a very uh, small talent gap between Ohio State and Oregon, and I think Ohio State is on that advantage. Um, I think this is a 60-40 game in favor of Ohio State right now. Um, again, they're just a quarterback. Oregon's just a quarterback away. Their defense is go really good, just like Ohio State's. Uh, their wide receiver core is all coming back. Ohio State has some really good wide receivers. Uh, some really good young wide receivers coming in and also some good wide receivers that are returning. Um, and then both teams running games should be really good. Ohio State with Trey Sermon and Oregon with C.J. Verdell. Again, the difference is just the quarterback. Justin Fields is a far better quarterback than Tyler Show. Um, and I don't think a lot of us really know what Tyler Show is capable of because of uh, we did not have spring football. So um, I'm going to give this game to Ohio State right now. Um, but again, I think Oregon definitely could beat Ohio State if Tyler Show um, is what we all, I think, want him to be. Next game, you look there, they play Hawaii. I'm not going to talk a lot about this game. Hawaii has been a fairly decent team, and I think they've been steadily improving. But then when you match up against Oregon and take the fact that it's at Oregon, there's, I, I don't see any way that Hawaii can beat Oregon. Again, Hawaii, a fairly decent team. I believe they're like seven and five or um, eight and five or eight and four every year. Um, so Hawaii, not a bad team, but they're not going to beat Oregon. Next week, they go on the road to play Colorado. Colorado is really interesting team for me. 
Um, I think everyone hypes up Colorado every year to be like, this is it. Colorado's finally going to be a solid team. And then they have their good moments and then they have their not so good moments. Colorado is a very, very uh, roller coaster type team. Um, and they do this every year. Um, I have some friends who are Buffs fans and they keep telling me like, man, when are we finally going to, when are we finally going to pan out? You know, when are we finally going to have that one good season? Um, I don't know if Colorado is going to have that good season this year. I think, again, they'll have a roller coaster esque type season. Um, I think the fact that Colorado gets Oregon at home is big. Um, I think, uh, or I know Colorado is returning a lot of production. Um, but when you match up against Oregon, again, it's, it's no contest. Oregon should beat Colorado easily. Then you got Washington. So Washington is an interesting team for me. They just lost Jacob Eason. That's big. Washington was a good team for a couple of years. And then last year, they kind of fell off the face of the earth. Uh, I think Washington has a chance to rebound this year. Of course, Chris Peterson is going to be gone. Uh, but a fresh start, fresh coaching staff. I think Washington has the potential to be really, really good. Um, I don't know. I think Washington might go maybe seven and five, eight and four this year. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards six and six, seven and five. Um, and again, Oregon gets Washington at home. No contest. Oregon wins. Then they have a bye week. I'm not really sure if this is where you'd want your bye week for Oregon. Maybe you'd want to have it before the Arizona game, before the Stanford game, before the USC game. Uh, maybe a couple weeks later. Um, I think this is a fairly decent spot for a bye week. I mean, it's not a great spot for a bye week, but it's a fairly decent spot. Um, it's before a road game, which is always nice. Uh, and that road game is going to be against Cal. So Cal is an, another interesting team because Cal, again, like Colorado, is a roller coaster esque type team. They have their good moments and then their bad moments. So, um, again, it's big that Cal gets Oregon at home, but I don't see Cal beating Oregon. So, Oregon will win that one. Then they get, excuse me, then they get Stanford at home. Um, I think Stanford is, I don't know, Stanford, ever since I think, um, Bryce Love, uh, the running back that they had, I believe that was his name. Ever since he kind of left and um, Hogan left and everyone there, I think Stanford has been down. Uh, I think Stanford could get back up this year, but I, I, I really don't think so. Um, again, Oregon gets Stanford at home. Stanford, they're not going to beat Oregon again. Oregon wins this one. Next, they have to play Arizona on the road. Again, Arizona was a team that was very average and could uh, – pull off some some upsets but now Arizona again just like a lot of Pac-12 teams they're kind of on uh in some down years um uh Khalil Tate I believe is going to be gone uh that's big for Arizona he was their one uh real playmaker uh, I know Arizona's running game is usually pretty good um but Arizona's defense is not going to be anything to write home about next year so Oregon will beat Arizona Next, here's a pretty interesting game. They're going to get USC, but they're going to get them at home. Um, again, I'm leaning toward Oregon in this game, but you never know. USC could be really, really good. Um, they're, again, they're returning Keaton Slovis, but you lose Michael Pittman. Um, USC, um, very interesting team, I think, to a lot of people. Uh, in this game in particular, it could be interesting. USC could pull off, um, could pull off what in my books is going to be called an upset. Um, cause I think Oregon will be favored by, um, seven to 10 points in this one, maybe even more, uh, depending on what USC does, but uh, again, yeah, I'm leaning toward Oregon in that game. Next you have Arizona state, Arizona state spoiled Oregon season last year. Oregon could have made it to the college football playoff instead of Oklahoma, but then Arizona state said, no, 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 not today. And Arizona state took them down. They get Arizona state at home this year. And I think Arizona State, again, has the potential to be a really good team, uh, unlike their in-state counterpart, Arizona, uh, who is going down. Arizona State is going up. Arizona State is just getting better year after year. Um, I think this year Arizona State has the potential to be a top 25 team. Um, I did not rank them in my preseason top 25 poll because of their schedule. Um, and, of course, we'll look at that in a later schedule preview. But um, Arizona State, again, just going up. Uh, I think this game could get a little bit interesting. With the fact that Oregon gets Arizona State at home, I'm going to go with the Ducks. 
Then they have to go on the road for their last two games of the season. They get to play Washington State on the road. Um, Washington State just lost their coach, Mike Leach. Um, I think Mike Leach was what made Washington State uh, a possible ranked team. I know they were good for a lot of years, or they were good for a couple of years. Uh, Washington State was down last year. They weren't that good. Um, I was still high on Washington State last year, and I, I, I'm not going to listen to myself again this year. I think Washington State will be on the decline. Um, but again, I think Washington State can um, – I think Washington State can make this game uh, interesting. They have some playmakers on both sides of the ball. Um, but again, I think Oregon, there, there's a significant talent gap between what Oregon and Washington State brings to the table. So my pick is for the Ducks. Then we have the Civil War, Oregon, Oregon State. Again, Oregon State is a team that's getting better year after year. They gave Oregon a game last year. Uh, they hadn't been able to do that in a long, long time. This is a series... But as of late, Oregon has just dominated. Uh, but Oregon State, again, on the rise. The Beavers are just getting better and better. Uh, the fact that they get Oregon at home is big for the Beavers. But, again, saying all that, I don't like their chances. I just don't. I, again, I keep talking about the talent gap, and I'll keep talking about it. The talent gap between what separates a good team and a great team especially in today's day and age, is so exponential, and it, it, it's just what you need. Again, Oregon State, I think they're going to give Oregon a game, but I do not see Oregon winning, or excuse me, I do not see Oregon State winning this game. I see Oregon, the Ducks, pulling out the Civil War. So with all of that being said and done, my prediction for Oregon in the 2020 season is 11-1. and one. And I think that one loss is going to come to, as I said earlier, Ohio State. I think that's going to be their one loss. Um, again, if they happen to win that game, I think they have the potential to lose to USC. Maybe they'll get, um, maybe they'll get bit by Colorado or Arizona. Maybe Oregon State will get them. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, Oregon State is going to finish with one loss. Uh, and I, I think more than likely that one loss is going to be to Ohio State. So now let's move on to our record range. What our record range is, is I uh, put this team, what I think is their worst case scenario, up against their best case scenario. So the worst case scenario I have for the Oregon Ducks is nine and three. Uh, of course, one of those losses would be to Ohio State, and the other obvious loss would be the USC. And then you're thinking, well, who would the third loss be? When you look at the schedule, there's no one who stands out to you as third loss. And I'm thinking it possibly could be North Dakota State. If North Dakota State comes in to uh, – Oregon like they came into Kinnick Stadium and beat Iowa and they beat Oregon, I think everyone is just going to be freaking out. And I think that could very well prove um, true. And I, I, I think it's plausible. I think North Dakota State uh, has, a, has a chance. It's a small chance, but I think they have a chance of beating Oregon. Um, or if Oregon ends up winning that game, of course, you'll lose to Ohio State USC, but then maybe they, you lose a game on the road. You lose a game like Colorado or Oregon State or Cal or one of those games on the road that maybe you shouldn't lose, or maybe they'll lose to uh, Arizona State. But I think the worst case scenario for Oregon is going nine and three. But I think the best case scenario for Oregon, of course, is gonna be 12 and 0. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Oregon and Tyler Show are gonna be amazing next year and they're just gonna mop the floor with Ohio State or beat them on some close call, something like that. Um, but again, if Oregon beats Ohio State, I really don't see any reason why they wouldn't go undefeated. Maybe USC or Arizona State gets them, but they have both of those games at home. All their games on the road are against teams that are probably going to finish the season seven and five or worse. Um, Oregon does not really have a tough road game. Um, so again, I think it is totally valid if, uh, that if Oregon beats Ohio State, there should be no reason why they go or why they don't go uh, undefeated. But my prediction is 11 to 1, of course, that one loss being to Ohio State. So that's going to do it for my schedule preview and record prediction for the 2020 Oregon Ducks. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Also, consider subscribing if you're brand new to the channel or just enjoy my content. And leave a comment down below. What is your prediction for Oregon? Uh, what's a possible game where you think um, people might be surprised uh, that Oregon might lose? Or what's a game that you might think, you know, Oregon has a better shot than we all think? Just tell me your thoughts. 
down below. And until next time, play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.